This is how we do undergraduate level control system analysis using Python. First of all, you have to install the Python control package. If you're using Google Colab as your Python development environment, in that case, you can pip install control. Or if you have Anaconda installed, in that case, from the Conda 4 channel, you can install the control package. Additionally, if you are using Conda, then in that case, you can also install Slycord. That will provide much more additional functionalities uh, to the base control package. To use the Python control package, you need to import it alongside the NumPy and Matplotlib package. You would need NumPy to create different types of arrays and you would need Matplotlib for plotting. The input cell number 2 is specific to this presentation, so you can safely ignore that part. There are several ways of defining transfer functions using the Python control package. You can call the transfer function function and pass in the coefficients of the numerator and the denominator. Also, you can create polynomials from NumPy and pass in the zero locations, pole locations and the gain. Here in line number four, we have defined a transfer function where we have a gain five and two zeros at minus two and minus five and three poles at minus four, minus five and minus nine. We can do pole zero cancellation using the min real function and that will remove redundant states from the system. We can do basic transfer function algebra like addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, etc. Also, inside the control system library, we have a feedback function. We can get standard properties of the transfer function, namely the DC gain, the locations of the poles, the locations of the zeros, and also we can evaluate a transfer function at a certain complex frequency. We can easily convert any transfer function to an equivalent state space model using the TF2SS function. And similarly, we can convert a state space model back to a transfer function model using the SS2TF function. We can define a state space model by defining A, B, C, D matrices and then calling the SS function from the control system module. That will create a state space model. And if you want to convert that state space model to equivalent transfer function model, you can easily do that using the SS2TF function. You can calculate the impulse response of a system by using the impulse response function. You can pass in a time array and if you don't, in that case, it will generate a suitable time array and return that time array. Similarly, using the step response function, you can calculate the step response of a system. The system can be any linear system defined either as a transfer function or as a state space model. If you have a state space model, in that case, you can pass in initial conditions to calculate the response of the system to initial conditions. In general, you can use the forced response function to calculate the response of the system to any arbitrary input. Here we depict the response of the system G1 that we defined earlier with respect to an input U which is defined as a sinusoid of frequency 1 radian per second. If we have a state space model, then using the forced response function, we can calculate the response of the system to any arbitrary input in addition to initial conditions. We can calculate the response to only initial conditions using the initial response function. For this to work, the system has to be defined using the state space model. You can also calculate the transient response characteristics like the rise time, settling time, maximum overshoot, undershoots, peak time, maximum peak value, steady state value, etc. using the step info function. Regarding frequency response, you can generate Bode plots. You can also just calculate the magnitude and phase responses. You can calculate the Nyquist plot using the Nyquist plot function. You can also use the stability margins function to calculate the stability margins. You can easily calculate the root locus. If you are using Matplotlib interactive windows, in that case, you can click on the root locus and that will actually give you a draggable pointer which will give you the values of the pole locations along with the gain values. If you define your system using state space, in that case, you can calculate the controllability matrix using the CTRB function. You can calculate the observability matrix using the OBSV function. You can also calculate the eigenvalues of the system matrix A. And using the place function, you can do elementary pole placement. Of course, the system has to be completely state controllable in order for the arbitrary pole placement to work. Here, using the place function, we get the gain k for the desired pole locations. If you define any system in the state space, you can calculate the corresponding canonical forms. This is the modal canonical form. Notice the round of errors. 
and you can also get the transformation matrix that can generate that modal canonical form. Similarly, you can convert it to the reachable canonical form or the controllable canonical form. You can also get the transformation matrix that transforms the original model to a reachable canonical model. Similarly, you can convert the system to an observable canonical form. You can also generate transfer functions representing time delays. You can use Pade approximation for that. In this example, we are approximating a delay of 3 seconds using a fifth order Pade approximation. There are many more topics including how to deal with nonlinear systems and different frequency response models. For more information, visit this website. Thank you.